Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 132. We're going to jump back down to the Virgin Islands tonight. And as you all know, I've been highly critical of Denise George and the Virgin Islands putting themselves into this case as a victim. Now, that's always been my biggest contention with them. Her positioning the islands as, uh, you know, an entity that has been taken advantage of by Jeffrey Epstein is is disingenuous, in my opinion. Everybody on the island, all of her predecessors, they all knew what Jeffrey Epstein was. They all knew what he was up to, and they still accepted his money. And then for the Virgin Islands to flip it around now and say that they're a victim in this case and that they, they, they're entitled to something from the estate, that's my big problem. That's where I have a problem with this whole, this whole entire thing. So tonight she has this interview in Vanity Fair, and I've had a couple of people send me the, uh, the link to it. I have not read it yet, so we're going to read it together. And, you know, maybe, we, maybe my mind will be changed about... Uh, Denise George, or maybe I'll feel a little bit more comfortable about what she has going on, because as of now, the way that it's been explained and what she has said is not something that I, I agree with. I don't agree that any sort of state, entity, county, country should get any of F Epstein's money. I think all of the people, the powers that be, all of the states, counties, federal agencies, governments, blah, 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 all of them failed these survivors and shouldn't be entitled to one single shekel. Every single dollar should go to these survivors. And if Denise George thinks the Virgin Islands is going to get one single dollar and not get raked over the coals here on this podcast, she is definitely mistaken. Now, on the flip side of that, if she really wants to help these survivors and she really wants to make sure that this estate is doing things on the up and up and that all of this money goes to the survivors, then I'll, I'll be happy to eat crow on Denise George. I'll be happy to eat my words and say that, all right, well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe she does care about these survivors. But the only way that that'll be the case is if the Virgin Islands is not getting any of this money. It all comes down to the money, right? They always say, follow the money, follow the money. And that's what I plan on doing, especially right here in this situation. Because my, my anger stems from the, the sole fact that these, these survivors have been jerked around for so long by so many different people, by so many different people in power, that for another person to step up and think that they're entitled to some of that money that these survivors should be getting, well, that, that makes me agitated. That makes me mad. Now, maybe Denise George doesn't want money for the islands. Maybe it's been reported wrong. Maybe she just wants to make sure that these survivors get, get their, just, their, their due. And if that's the case, well, like I said, I am happy to eat crow. And we're going to have to see how this all unfolds, right? But hopefully this article will put a little more meat on the bone and we'll see what's what. So, the headline. They're trying to protect their friends. U.S. Virgin Islands AG outraged at Epstein's estate's efforts to control the case. By Holly Aguirre, February 13th, 2020. Attorneys for the, Ep the estate of Jeffrey Epstein are attempting to hide his assets and cover up his crimes, according to the Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands. That is a very, 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 very big charge. And I would not, I, look, I don't think that the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands would make that statement if she didn't have some receipts, right? If she didn't have evidence. If you're going to make a statement like that, you have to have some evidence to back that up, especially if you're the U.S. Attorney General of the Virgin Islands. In an exclusive interview with Vanity Fair, Attorney General Denise George accuses the estate of using non-disclosure agreements with Epstein's victims and former employees to conceal the criminal activity of Epstein and his associates who are still there. Well, that's unacceptable. I can definitely agree with her about that. And if the... I've said this several times. There's there should be zero NDAs included with anything. If any of these girls decide that they want to just settle out of court and that, you know there's some sort of uh, trust or fund for that, then that's fine. But they should not have to sign any NDA. Their story is theirs to tell. They should not have to uh, um, give up their rights to tell their story for what they're due anyway from Jeffrey Epstein and his estate for what he did to them. So I totally agree with Miss George here. Definitely on board with that. 
Last month, George, who was Miss Virgin Islands in 1977, attended the Howard University School of Law and returned to spend decades as a, as a successful prosecutor, also placed liens on the estate in order to make sure his victims receive their due. And again, that's where it gets sticky. She put liens on the estate to make sure that the victims receive their due. Well, then does that mean that the Virgin Islands is going to forego whatever claims they're making on cash to make sure that these uh, survivors get whole, that they get right? Because the Virgin Islands, again, folks, is not entitled to any of this money, in my opinion. If he owns anything else that's not connected to here, then we will have no jurisdiction, says George in her office in St. Thomas Government Employees Retirement System Building. As the investigation continues, we will find that out. But as of now, as far as what is in the estate, it appears that a well-substantial amount is connected to his entities right here in the Virgin Islands. And again, this is where I get suspect. There's a lot of money in this trust, this 1953 trust, and a lot of it's tied up in the Virgin Islands. And if Miss George is coming out and saying, look, I'm going to make sure that the, every last one of these dollars goes to these survivors, then hell, I am completely 100% on board and I'll, I'll be cheering her all the way home. But it does not look like that to me. You know, the, the liens and all of that stuff, it just, it makes me, it makes me skeptical, skeptical considering how these survivors have been treated by the government throughout, throughout this whole case, right? So all of a sudden, they should trust the Virgin Islands government who has turned, the, who turned their back on them for so long, who turned a blind eye to their abuse for so long. Now they're supposed to just think, oh, well, well they're going to be a fair arbiter here. They're going to make sure I get my due. I'm sorry, but the, the trust is gone, and people have a right to be skeptical of everybody involved in this situation. The people who worked on Epstein's island tended to his various companies, such as Southern Trust, drove his boats, piloted his planes, etc., probably know more about Epstein's activities than anyone else, and are all likely bound by non-disclosure agreements. Well, that's BS. There has to be a way to, to get rid of those, especially, I bet you if you drop a RICO charge on them, you'll get rid of those non-disclosure agreements. I bet you if they get slapped with RICO charges, there's a statute in RICO probably that would do away with those even. That's how powerful the RICO statutes are. So all of these employees that uh, benefited from his ill-gained fundage from his ongoing criminal conspiracy from his ongoing criminal enterprise, well, they're all involved as well. How do we know that they weren't involved in facilitating his crimes? We don't know that. And that's what RICO law would do. He would, we'd be able to drop, well, we, the government would be able to drop those RICO charges on them and then have a wide ranging, a wide ranging set of abilities for them to go after them, for them to prosecute the case. But for some reason, nothing. An employee told me that he saw Prince Andrew on a balcony out on Little St. James groping girls right out in the open, George says. He said he remembered walking up to him and saying, Good morning, your highness. That's a bombshell, folks. That is an absolute bombshell. So now we have the, uh, the Attorney General of the Virgin Islands saying she has a witness who saw Prince Andrew groping girls right out in the open. Well, that's nice. Just more... Just more evidence that Virginia Roberts is telling the truth, by the way, folks. Andrew is a brute, a disgusting, disgusting individual, and he would happily was partaking in the, the forbidden fruits of Jeffrey Epstein's disgusting enterprise. Buckingham Palace declined to comment. Prince Andrew has denied any knowledge of Epstein's systematic and long-running abuse of underage girls. Because he can't sweat, he, he wears the wrong kit, his fingers are too fat, he was eating pizza, you know, Prince Andrew. But accusations against friends and associates of Epstein are impossible to investigate, George says, unless the estate agrees to release former employees from the NDAs they were, they were, they were required to sign when they went to work for the convicted sex offender on his private island. The estate is going to have to cooperate with law enforcement and release these employees so they can feel comfortable to come forward, she says. They have to be allowed to speak up. I 100% agree with her there. 100% agree with her there. And if, if there's a way that she can compel them to do so with her power as a uh, officer of the court, then I think that she should do that. She should focus on this right here, folks, right? Getting rid of the NDAs, making it so that everybody can speak up 
Focus on that and keep your grubby little paws off of the dough. In addition, George says Epstein's estate has proposed creating a fund that would compensate his victims only if they agree to not sue anyone associated with his crimes. That's a non-starter right there. There is no way that any of these lawyers should acquiesce and, and be involved in a settlement where they cannot sue anyone else associated with the crimes. Because there are a lot of people associated with these crimes, and anybody who was involved in their abuse should be held to account. Anybody who was involved in the trafficking of these girls should be able to be sued. It should be a goddamn sue party. It is common practice that if you settle a claim with the other party, then you do not file any claims against that party, which would be the estate, George says. But to expand it to include Jeffrey Epstein's friends, there are victims who have been raped by other people. That alone, that they would put those words in there, tells you where they're coming from. They're trying to protect their friends, and it's not fair to the victims. She's 100% right about that, too. And good on you, Miss George. Good on you for being so uh, forward with this and being so brazen with it and, and letting them know that it's not going to occur. Look, the trust, the people who are running the trust, uh, Con, uh, Con and Indyke, I don't trust either of them. I trust them a lot less than I trust George, that's for sure. But at the same time, I'm still skeptical of George here because of the claims for the money. If she would just stay focused on this, then she'd be she'd be an all-star, right? If she would just focus on going after these guys and making sure that the NDAs aren't uh, aren't binding anymore, then hey, you know what? Happily, I will eat that crow. But again, I'm going to remain skeptical until we see this whole entire thing play out. Attorneys for the estate have argued that they are trying to ensure that Epstein survivors are compensated quickly and fairly. But per George, under the proposed terms of the fund, the estate itself would select the administrators who would oversee compensation to victims and pay them huge fees to do so. Again, that's unacceptable. It should not be up to the executors uh, to... to um, to establish uh, uh, the administrators, to, to select the administrators who would oversee the compensation to the survivors. That I don't know who should set that up, but it should not be the, uh, the estate. Maybe, the, uh, maybe the, the lawyer, maybe there should be uh, representatives from all parties. I don't know how that should work, but it should not be the estate. I was outraged, George says. The perpetrator doesn't get to pick who oversees the funds for victims. They're proposing this trust and picking the people who they want. They're paying them tons of money to the point where they are depleting the very estate that they are supposed to be honestly using to be ca accountable for the crimes that were committed. Uh, I want, Again, 100% agree with Miss George here. I've said it from the get-go. They should freeze all of these funds. These funds should not be being paid out. To Nobody should be getting any money. No lawyers, no gardeners, no pilots, no boat guys, nobody who's cleaning the pool, none of it. Nobody should be getting one single cent until we can get an accounting of exactly what's there and who is getting what. On February 4th, 2020, at a hearing in a windowless courtroom on St. Thomas, attorneys for the estate said the proposed fund would be administered by Jord Jordana Harris Feldman, the former deputy special, ma special master for the Ma September 11th Victim Compensation Fund and Kenneth Feinberg, an alternative arbitration expert based in Washington, uh, D.C., who has administered the 9-11 Fund and worked on restitution for Bernie Madoff's victims. Oh, yeah, because, you know, the 9-11 folks, got, they, they were treated so fairly that we should have Feinberg and Feldman come and uh, take care of this, uh, this fund as well. No, nah, I think we're going to, we, we could do without the retreads. How about we get some other people in there that aren't retreads? Some other people that, pro these people probably are friends with Epstein on the, on the down low. Each testified that they would make close to $2 million for their role in establishing the fund, even though Feinberg's services would be required for only two months. In addition, they would receive another 400000 to set up a website and call center, plus an estimated 120000 to 160000 a month for office costs. Give me a break with that. No way, no how. Not one single dollar to these clowns, Feinberg and, and, and Feldman. Please, give me a break. All right, $2 million? $2 million? 
According to George, attorneys for the estate have presented an incomplete accounting of Epstein's assets, which are valued somewhere between nearly $578 million and $635 million. They have provided no verified inventory of assets, as required by law, and have failed to adequately account for ne- nearly $13 million that was transferred out of the estate after Epstein died last August. She is 100% right again about this. These assets need to be frozen. I don't understand how anyone is drawing a check off of this man at this point. He's dead. He's accused of running an ongoing criminal conspiracy. And his estate is still paying out money. Did John Gotti's estate still pay out money when he was arrested? Give me a break. They froze all of his assets. So what the hell is going on here? In Epstein's will, he bequeathed his property to the acting trustees of the 1953 trust. But thus far, members of this trust remain a mystery as their names on documents submitted to the AG's office and probate court were redacted. The will, executed two days before Epstein's death in New York, in a New York jail cell, names Epstein's brother Mark as his sole relative. Epstein's attorney, Eric Kellerhall's Virgin Islands law firm, is in charge of the estate. Keller Halls had dealings with Epstein at least as far back as 2011 when she handled the ownership transfer, oh, get ready of this one, boys and girls, transfer of L Brand's billionaire Leslie Wexner's Upper East Side Mansion to an entity controlled by Epstein. She was also secretary and treasurer of Epstein's Gratitude America charity. She served as secretary, treasurer, and trustee of the Jeffrey Epstein Virgin Islands Foundation as well, according to a 2015 registration statement. To date, according to George, there is no official inventory of what is included in the estate. Estate attorneys initially asserted that Epstein was not the sole owner of the vast fortune as late as the February 4th hearing. So basically what they're saying is, whoa, whoa, hold on. He doesn't own all of this stuff. He's just a part owner. You can't have all of the assets. Boy, the rats sure are all out, aren't they, huh? The hyenas are around the carcass. They attested that he was merely a shareholder with 999,000 to 10,000 shares of various companies. They have since said that the late Epstein did indeed own 100% of the shares. They were trying to play games. They were trying to make it so his estate didn't look like it had as much money as it did. And we all know that that's a bunch of BS. We all know that they're playing games. And I don't blame uh, Attorney General George for being pissed off about all of this stuff at all. I would be too. And I'd be going hard in the paint against them the way she is. But again, folks, my problem is the fact that they're setting themselves up as if they were a victim. They were not. It was just so blatant, says George. They submitted no receipts or invoices. I mean, who does that? How are we supposed to divide an estate when the people handling it won't even disclose the assets? They have to disclose the assets. They can't be piecemealing things. And that's why I said for the 400th time, freeze the assets. Let's get a forensic accountant in there, have them trace all of the money, where it was all going, who all received funds, why they received funds. And if anybody received funds illegally, well, now they're caught up in this as well. What, what, what are we waiting for? According to George, it's possible that Epstein tax attorney Keller Halls has a financial interest in the company used by Epstein to purchase Great St. James. It's a blatant conflict of interest, says George, who has filed a lawsuit against the estate and frozen its assets. They are pretty much admitting to Epstein's guilt. What they are not admitting to the... Is, What they are not admitting to is the guilt of the people involved with the companies associated with him. Keller Halls did not respond for a request to comment. Well, this is this is interesting. I like that she froze the assets. That's definitely a positive thing that the assets are frozen. But again, if I'm being cynical, is it because she doesn't want to see any more money siphoned off because that means the Virgin Islands wouldn't be getting any more dough? On February 10th, in a letter to attorney to an attorney at Keller Hall's law firm, George laid out 15 commitments to the estate must meet before establishing a fund for the victims, including a full accounting of Epstein's assets and a waiver of any NDA signed by Epstein's former employees. I want the survivors to get what they deserve, George says, but they have to get it independently and impartially. And these people aren't the ones to do it. 
These are the very same people who are officers in the entities here that directly facilitated the criminal activity of Epstein. They're pushing this fund without even complying with the laws and disclosing honestly how much is in the estate. Wow. Well, look, if if this is the, the, the route that Miss George is going to go from here on out and she's going to be a bulldog going after everybody that's involved in this and she wants to make sure that the survivors are the ones getting the dough, then, I, like I said, I am more than willing to eat crow and admit that I was wrong about Miss George. But until the day that that's proven, I'm going to remain skeptical, folks. All right? I'm happy that she's going hard in the paint against uh, against Epstein's estate and against these lawyers who are obviously still involved up to the neck with Epstein's finances and all of his business dealings. And a lot of them probably have personal stakes in all of this stuff. I wouldn't put it past them. But I am still going to be very skeptical of Miss Miss George's office and what their motivations are. So... I'm willing to let it play out, and I'm willing to see where it goes, obviously, but I'm definitely going to continue to be very critical of all entities that are involved in any sort of battle for the estate when it comes to money, because I'm on record here um, a bazillion times, it seems like, saying it. The survivors are the only ones that should be entitled to any of this money. These survivors need this money, all right? Look, They've been through some horrible, horrible shit, folks. Horrible shit. And usually I'm not the type of person that's, uh, you know, gung-ho about you know, big lawsuits getting paid out to people. And because we know we live in a society where there's a lot of devious people who, who make things up uh, to, to get money. But in this case, following it the way we have, 132 straight days, reading everything I've read, talking to, you know, people who were actually abused by this man. Look... This is as real as real as it's ever gotten. This is the most real the most real sex trafficking case I have ever seen in my life. And there is zero doubt that if anyone is getting any money from this estate, it's the survivors. And hopefully Miss George is genuine about wanting to make sure that the funds are dispersed correctly, but unfortunately we have to remain skeptical, and that's what I'm going to do here on this podcast. I, I will remain skeptical, but willing to be, you know, I'm willing to have the evidence uh, bring me to, into, in the other direction and, and see Miss George as somebody who is an ally to these survivors. So I'm up in the air here still, folks, right? I'm going to remain skeptical, but after this interview and her clarifying some things, it seems like she has the right idea. And freezing the assets is a great move. I'm totally on board with that, and I'm glad that that's occurred. All right, everybody, so that concludes our three-episode day today. I hope you all enjoyed the uh, content. I'll be back tomorrow with a morning update and a daily drop. And, uh, you know, we'll do it all over again. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. And if you would like to help support the podcast and you like the content we're producing here and you want us to produce even more content, you can click the GoFundMe link in the description box to help, uh, you know, support the show and help us, uh, you know, keep growing. All right, everybody, I hope everybody has a fantastic Thursday night, and I will talk to everybody in the morning.